Does your favorite news site get an A plus or an F for privacy? Encryption for cameras? Make it so. Yahoo's breached accounts hit the billions and a new malvertising campaign hits sites. Coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for Tuesday, December 20th, 2016. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. A quick shout out to our patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire. Especially at this time of year, I just wanted to say thank you for your contributions. You fund the making of the show, so thank you so much for letting us bring you security news every single week. Our first story is all about HTTPS. HTTPS is quite the standard for online browsing as it offers users some privacy when they visit sites. It offers website security, especially when logging into pages and when you use payment details on sites, which by the way, can I mention, it is really fun to capture packets while you're browsing to see what sites are transmitting your login credentials in plain text. I do that sometimes, I know it's weird. Also, HTTPS protects journalistic sources whenever they are trying to get in touch with news outlets. HTTPS can also help with preventing authoritarian censorship of sites, and it can help stop content modification like packet injection, and it can help with speeding up websites. Well, there is a new site by the Freedom of the Press Foundation, and they are looking to help spur the adoption of HTTPS across news sites to better help users, but also to protect real news outlets as well as journalists from potentially dangerous occurrences. At their new site, securethe.news, you can view a leaderboard of news sites and whether or not they have adopted HTTPS, and if it's the default, and if HSTS is preloaded for the site. HSTS is HTTP strict transport security, which prevents sites from downgrade attacks that can change them from HTTPS to HTTP, allowing for insecure browsing, which we do not want, so HSTS is a good thing. Only one site at this time of recording gets an A-plus for their use of privacy practices, with a few closely following behind, but eh, they still got a little bit of work to do. Now, this isn't the first face slap that we have seen to websites that don't use encryption. It is a step in the right direction, though. We have seen similar sites like this pop up for tracking canaries, as well as tracking which sites use two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. I would love to hear what you think, too, in the comments below. From my, this is something I would totally support because I go to HackerCons with my camera for my podcast pile, an open letter was signed by over 150 documentary filmmakers and photojournalists for the most popular camera companies, including Nikon, Sony, Canon, Olympus, and Fuji. The request is simply to add encryption to cameras. This news also comes from the Freedom of the Press Foundation, in which filmmakers and journalists outlined the harsh realities about their filming. Border security guards, local police, etc., and more attempt to seize video equipment countless times, and while it is easy to encrypt an external hard drive so that film is secure, it is not so easy to encrypt an SD card that was just recorded onto and is still in your camera. And the same thing goes for actual film. Journalists don't have a way to remotely lock or encrypt a camera and its footage if it is seized or stolen, and in many cases, the outcome could be detrimental to getting the truth out to the public. And when it comes to film cameras, there really is no way to encrypt them, so digital cameras is best. But the task wouldn't be easy, but manufacturers would have the support from the Freedom of the Press Foundation in making this a reality. We would love to see this happen, so guys, make it so. I think we all just need to take a moment of silence for Yahoo. No, actually, no, I really don't think we need to do that. Remember when Yahoo was like 500 million user accounts had data stolen just like three months ago or four months ago? Yeah, this time it's even more. No, it's not a few more million. It's one billion accounts. That's B, as in Bravo, as in Alpha Bravo Charlie. Yes, B. 1 billion accounts more. These are not including the first 500 million. 1 billion accounts more have been stolen in a completely separate incident that happened in August of 2013. Data stolen in the hack includes email addresses, names, phone numbers, dates of birth, MD5 hashed passwords, and encrypted and unencrypted security questions and answers. Attackers have also forged cookies, allowing them to log into accounts without passwords, but Yahoo has already invalidated those. The attack may be a state-sponsored actor connected to the breach of 500 million accounts
previously happened. So what can you do? If you do have a Yahoo account, change your password, change your security questions, and make sure to add two-factor authentication. Make sure that you don't use your Yahoo password anywhere else. And oh yeah, you may just want to consider moving off of Yahoo completely. There are plenty of other email service providers. Just last week, I discussed a type of malware hitting banner advertisements on legitimate sites called Stagano, which uses steganography to hide itself in ads distributed across across popular websites. This week, another type of malware is being used in a malvertising campaign that doesn't hit a user's computer, oh no, but it goes directly for vulnerable routers. Whenever a user clicks these ads, it takes them to a site hosting DNS Changer, which is an exploit kit that remotely infects routers with crappy passwords and firmware. DNS Changer targets specific IP addresses of routers, so if your router IP address isn't in that range, it doesn't get exploited. But if it is, the exploit is hidden in a PNG image and it redirects a user to a site hosting DNS changer. There, a second image is infected with malware and the router gets infected. So if the router doesn't have default credentials or it isn't easily exploited, the malware is aborted. But vulnerable routers include the D-Link DSL 2740R, the Netgear R6200, and plenty more. So what do you do to defend against these ads? Well, you could run an ad blocker, but now new sites are blocking article viewing for just doing that. So you could also run the most up-to-date firmware possible on your router. You can use a long password on your router, and you can disable remote administration. Thank you again for becoming patrons of ThreatWire. You can contribute over at patreon.com slash threatwire to get your name on threatwire.net as well as your own fur baby in the show. And as a reminder, this show is completely independent. It is completely ad-free, so our patrons are the reason why we are able to bring this to you. Of course, if you cannot contribute, you can give the show a thumbs up. That does help. You can subscribe on youtube.com slash hack5. That also helps. I was made aware that there is a weird bug hitting some YouTube channels where users get unsubscribed from their favorite channels. So if you see that kind of thing happen, you can hit this little notification bell, which is right next to the subscribe button, so that you'll be notified whenever we upload new episodes and we upload about twice a week. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I am Shannon Morse, wishing you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I will see you next week for our 2016 wrap-up episode. I hope you have a secure holiday. Bye.